Good morning, everyone. Well, today we're headed to another adventure. We left Antwerp, we have our van, and we headed east across the countryside. Now, most of our drive was kind of on the interstate, so we didn't film a whole lot, but we did see some beautiful leaves, some farm country, and lots of windmills. But today we're headed to a cool, charming little city in eastern Belgium called Denant. And it is going to be filled with history, cool architecture. Who knows? Maybe we'll even find some good food. But we're excited to explore and we are excited to have you guys with us. So come on guys, let's go check out Denant. We have made it to Dinant, squeezed into the perfect parking place with our master parallel parker, Kurt, with my guidance, of course. We're going to have a little salad before we start walking around this cool little town. And uh, we got some exciting things to see here, we think. What do you think, Kurt? Well, when we pulled into town, you know, you never know what you're going to get when you come to one of these little cities. And all of a sudden you turn and you that ends with the river and we came along the river so all these buildings are like pushed up against the cliff and sandwiched between the river and the architecture the ride through there it just got us all excited there's some really cool scenic stuff to see so we're excited to get out on foot and take a closer in-depth look this looks like this is gonna be our camp spot for the night right in the center of Dinant riverfront actually we got it straight between us and the river what's the name of the river snow moose moose anyway <laughs> we are riverfront and you can see up there on the hill some historic buildings you can see kind of the cliff face we talked about and the historic buildings so we are in prime spot yeah so this town for centuries and centuries and centuries, way back to before people even were here, was like a battlefield. And it's because it falls in this canyon type valley of this river, it was like prime war area. Now we didn't do a lot of research of all the older wars, but definitely started with all the French kings and everything battling over this area. And World War I and World War II had quite a bit of stuff here. Some very sad massacres happened here by the Germans. And that's why up on the top of that hill, there's supposed to be a really cool kind of museum in that citadel. We hope we can get up there and show it to you. 
Is that where you take the chairlift up? Like you can, they got a car on there. Right along this river right here, there's all sorts of little cruise boats that look like they take little day tours, probably sunset tours. And this one right here looks like it has a fancy restaurant on board. It says 250 people max. There's a little fireplace going in there. And you can see people are sitting down to have a nice little, nice little dinner. Le Sax. One thing I've been noticing on some of the churches and structures here is they have like almost like quasi onion domes on top of them. We saw that over in Tinsey where we stayed and here they are as well. And they're not just on the churches, it looks like uh, they're on some of the hotels too. Look at the big waffle up there, Snow. I like waffles. Look at this. Belgian waffle. I don't know if we've told you. Do not. The town we're in is in Belgium. We might have to have one more of these before we cross the border into France. Look, Snow, saxophones. All right, another cool thing about this city is this is where the saxophone was born. Adolphe Sax is his name, and he invented the saxophone in the early 1840s. He actually patented it in, I believe, 1846. He was born and raised here. His mom said he was a very troubled child. She did not think he would survive, but past like five or six years old, many, many near death experiences in this young man's life, but he did survive, invented the saxophone, some other odd instruments, spent most of his adult life in Paris playing with famous musicians. Now we see why there's a bridge covered with saxophone. Insert saxophone music, please. And look guys, as we cross the bridge right here, they have all sorts of giant saxophones and all kinds of different countries' flags. And look, they have our home flag, the United States. Super cool. Oh, this is the, uh, yeah. Charles de Gaulle. So when we were reading about the history of this town, it said that Charles de Gaulle was uh, injured here during World War I. I guess a leg injury. And I'll look, you can see the thing in his leg. I wonder if that's where his injury was. But, and we knew we had heard the name. We thought it was because that was the name of the airport in Paris where we landed. So we figured he must be important and we Googled him. And he was actually the president of France 
I believe in the 1950s or 60s. He yeah. ended his reign in 1969. That's right, right after Kurt was born. So, there you go. Made room for me. This is also the bridge named after him. Ah, Charles de Gaulle Bridge. Yes. Cool. <laughs> what a beautiful little city and we just played around on the bridge with the saxophones super cool super cool story and now we've got this giant church cathedral here and it looks like unfortunately it is closed but just looking at the outside it just looks so old you can see they may be done a little bit of touch up on it but I guarantee you some of that stuff is original inside. I've walked through the night I've seen better days And you've always been the same I've been tried by fire And healed by your rain And in every season, God, you are the same So in 934 is when this church was originally commissioned and it stayed that way for centuries. In 1227, an avalanche from these cliffs behind it crushed it. So they started to re rebuild it in this neo-Gothic style that was the, all the rage in France at the time. Now there was a big battle where Charles the Bold came in here in 1466 to do a land siege and take over the town. And the whole town was flattened, including the church. So they started to rebuild it again in 1475. In the 19th century, it was in really bad condition. That's when they did their giant renovation and put it back to what they thought it looked like in the 1200s. Now in 1914, during World War I, 
the the top of this thing caught on fire when the Germans came in here to take out French snipers uh, and it was rebuilt and then um, 2014 it had a nice renovation so we do see some of the newer stuff they replaced all the bells and everything so this church has very significant history and it's beautiful during the renovations of the in the 1800s this famous stained glass window was constructed by an artist in Ghent and it's uh, kind of the legacy of this church it is the great window of the Virgin Mary and it is a very special window for this town this church and uh, it's just got a lot of stories and history that go along with it and it's a really amazing stained glass window through here because in the 900s when Charles the Bold came in he was coming to take over the coppersmiths and I've seen copper stuff around town all right guys we got some good news first of all inside of that church was absolutely epic and informational but it looks like the entrance to the citadel is open the good news is well it's opened the bad news is look at the stair climb up well, they have a tram car i don't know if it's running if it's not running kurt is taking you all up while i have coffee but let's go in and see if i get to go up too all right snow chickened out on the stairs of course i did look at him but the good news is we can drive up in the van yeah. so we're probably going to push that till tomorrow morning before we leave town because we still have a little bit more exploring to do yeah, yeah. this is a great little town for our second adventure in europe first one in our van <laughs> Look at this little All right, do you guys see all these and I know there's a little bit of a glare But do you see all these fruits here? I believe there's some kind of candy or chocolates. I think they're chocolate or something, maybe chocolate. And I think I have an idea. And think, look, they got gingerbreads I, back there. I think we're gonna go ahead and go drive up today and see the Citadel because the weather's good. All right, we're gonna drive up top to the Citadel, which requires backing this giant van out onto a one-way road. Can you see Kurt or do I need to get out? All right. I can't see anything. I'd have to get out. <laughs> We're not afraid of narrow roads. We'll just back up. <laughs> Said it'd be a narrow road. <laughs> All right, we've been on several walks now. But G-Man, he really hasn't figured out this environment yet. He, uh, he's been doing a lot of smelling and he's very cautious and very hesitant to kind of get out and explore. So he's kind of still figuring it out.
right guys fortunately I was able to get G out of the van and get him for my little buddy out for a walk we always enjoy the nature he is still adjusting to Europe I promise hopefully he'll get it figured out but we're entering the Citadel area right now and this is a French cemetery And there's a saxophone here, <laughs> symbolizing uh, that we're in the right place. And I will also say that it's starting to sprinkle a little bit. So today I thought we were gonna have our first day in Europe without rain, but I'm not so sure that's gonna happen now. Anyway, we'll see and let's go look at this facility. I'm sure some hard fought wars happened right here at this place. And at the entrance, look at the little Roomba mower. So we got a contrast there. If you guys can see, there's sort of a fighter jet back there, old, old airplane, probably World War II. <laughs> and then a self-mowing little robot. So what a contrast. <laughs> That's a Eurasian blackbird. Thank you. All right, we made it past the gatekeeper. <laughs> so that's a carving someone did of it in the 15th century. And this is the center. Oh, this is where Charles the Bold came, took over the town. Oh, there's the bridge. Yeah, this is, and there was the church. So in the, 1466, he wiped the town out. And it's all burning. That's when the chapel, yeah. the church burned. Yeah. And then this is... Well, that's the fortress up above the us. 1696, the plans for the citadel. So it's on the other side of the river too. was when this one was made. And look down there, guys. You can see the city.
That's for shooting people. Yeah, that would have heated everything up in the forge, yeah. Bang, Bang yo, head. This is the mechanic shop. Yeah. Oh, here, look, you can see the thing they used to stuff the, the powder or whatever it was down in there. Oh, look at the kitchen. Oh, here's the bakery. Some more cannons. Brass, you said that. I said copper. Copper, it's brass. So I think this is mostly like German headgear, right? I mean, these are the types of weapons they had back then. The bayonets. I, I mean, these these guns were probably. I mean, they, undoubtedly they were used. Yeah. So that was our first museum visit since we've been in Europe and this one obviously at the Citadel, a fort, was a war museum and to be honest with you it was the most captivating museum and intense museum that I ever been in. We learned about Bloody Sunday, the massacre at Bloody Sunday and the role that this area played in the war and on display were so many weapons that were actually used in the wars including giant cannons uh, rifles guns and you could just look out the little slots that they had for the guns and and we walked in some trenches as well they yeah. had some mocked up trenches and it was just captivating some just to think about the war and how intense and violent oh, the whole thing was horrifying. wow guys that was pretty pretty intense uh, but anyway 
that's going to conclude this video for our visit to Nanat. It has been an incredible time here from the city, the history, the saxophone, the citadel, all the stuff. What Just nice the beautiful trip. scenery. What a great place. With a lot of history. But guess what, guys? We got another really exciting adventure coming up real soon. Hit the subscribe, turn your notifications on, and we'll see you soon, guys. Cheers. Cheers. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers guys! Mm -hmm.